for weeks, months, years of speculation finally came to an end today with Attorney General Maura Healey's announcement. My team protected students and homeowners from predatory lenders, took on ExxonMobil for lying about climate change, and Purdue Pharma and the Sacklers for fueling the opioid epidemic. I've stood with you as the people's lawyer, and now I'm running to be your governor. Healy, of course, made history as the first openly gay state attorney general in the country when she took office in 2015 and gained national attention for several of the lawsuits she mentioned in that video, plenty of which pitted her squarely against the Trump administration. With more than three and a half million dollars in the bank and a strong name recognition, some political observers argue it's her race to lose, with State Senator Sonia Chang-Diaz and Harvard professor Danielle Allen having already declared as well. But Healy certainly has her critics too. Joining me to discuss all things about the governor's race, Shannon O'Brien, former state treasurer and Democratic gubernatorial candidate in the 2002 election against Mitt Romney, and Erin O'Brien, associate professor of political science at UMass Boston. O'Brien's welcome. It's good to see you. Thanks for joining me tonight. <laughs> I want to start with uh, you first, Erin, um, just to talk about what a great rollout this was. We were talking about this for, you know, I made a joke about years, but for like four days, she had press coverage about whether or not she was or she wasn't and when she did. So it, it from a, a, just an objective political rollout, it, it went pretty well. I think so. I think her and her team have to be very happy. They've dominated press coverage for three or four days, like you said. They've got all the money and they've got the, um, they want to come out with an air of inevitability. And I think they accomplished that thus far. Yeah, I want to talk about that. I want to first, Shannon, before we chat with you, uh, look at the, 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 the statement that Danielle Allen, Allen posted on her website, of course, uh, about Healy's decision to join the governor's race. Uh, Danielle Allen says, I'm in this race and I've been in it for a year to make sure Massachusetts has a real choice, a choice between a perspective ready to meet the moment and business as usual. Uh, Shannon O'Brien, it's an interesting spot for uh, Maura Healy to be in. Um, obviously with Sonia Chang-Diaz also in the race, she's gonna be a little bit of the conservative institutional candidate in the primary, no? I don't know if, she, you know, the first openly gay attorney general can be the conservative, <laughs> in, you know, uh, but the fact is, what, what, what I really think is important about, about her, you know, entering this race as an attorney general, you know, we've seen attorneys general, you know, run for governor unsuccessfully on a number of occasions. Um, but I think that Mora brings something different. And it's not so much the left, right, center, you know, even, you know, the issues as much as um, she brings this personality. And, and I think that that is one of the things that makes it very uh, good for her as a candidate, because a lot of the, I, I remember the first, and this is not to, to make anything, a bad statement about Tom Riley, but I remember the first time <laughs> I had a press conference with him and I'm the treasurer and there had been thefts of millions of dollars out of the treasury. And I walk into the room and I go, hey, hi, you know, like typical politician, how you doing, Joe? <laughs> and he walks in and it's like a dead body on the floor. And, and so, you know, but he was a real cop. And, and I think that what Morris sort of transcends here, um, and again, not to disparage, because you have two other incredibly talented progressive women in this race also, but she is just, you know, just a wonderful person. And she brings this personality to the race that I think transcends that sort of top cop um, and that she brings a sort of empathy and an understanding uh, that, that makes her different from other attorney general candidates. But again, this is not to take away from uh, the other two women who are in the race because they're both incredibly capable and talented. I actually uh, volunteered on the Tom Riley uh, governors mm -hmm. uh, before I was a journalist on his campaign and we <laughs> spent a lot of time telling him to smile. Uh, and he <laughs> said, usually, if you see me, it's bad news. What do you want me to That's do? Right. So, but to that <laughs> point, Aaron O'Brien, you know, the list of attorneys general who have run and lost for this, uh, Martha mm -hmm. Coakley, Tom Riley, Frank Bellotti, Scott Harshberger, and that's just from this century. We're not even going back further. <laughs> it's hard for the law enforcement person uh, who's in that, that spot to act, sometimes overcome that, and especially in this progressive state, you know, with our massive independent voters still, but still really put forward a progressive democratic agenda, no? 
I think that's true. Um, but I think what's different about this race is Shannon said she's a pathbreaker. She's well known and she's known as a liberal, not necessarily progressive, but a, a liberal in that top spot who's pushing back against a very unpopular Trump administration in Massachusetts. So I think all those things are going for her on top of the fact the current candidate um, who should emerge on the Republican side is Jeff Deal. Jeff Deal already, already ran statewide against Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren and got crushed. He is a Trump representative. Massachusetts has a taste for moderate GOP governors. It does not have a taste for Donald Trump, and that's who Jeff Deal is. So I think the conditions she's running are different, and she's a really quality candidate, as Shannon put forth. I want to take a look at the statement that uh, Jeff Deal uh, released regarding Healy's announcement. And in part, it says, over the past year, we have seen the sad results of failed Democratic leadership in Washington and continues. And most of all, our nation stands profoundly divided. More Healy's announcement signals that the start of a race by Democratic candidates to double down on these failed policies right here in Massachusetts. Shannon O'Brien, assuming that... Um, Maury Healy gets through the primary and faces off against Jeff Deal, uh, not to get too over our skis here, but does this mean that we're going to be in a situation where we have uh, a, a Trump mandate, a Trump referendum in Massachusetts where Jeff Deal is running on, on uh, all the ways that Maury Healy attacked Trump and all the ways that Trump is good and Maury Healy is running a different sort of race? I think Maura Healy would, or, or any of the Democratic candidates, would, you know, thank their lucky stars if this is a referendum on Trump. Um, you know, I, uh, uh, Jeff Deal just last week uh, had a, an event, you know, with one of the domestic terrorists, you know, who invaded the, the Capitol building. Um, and so, you know, I just don't think, you know, he does not follow in the footsteps of, of moderate to liberal, you know, Republicans, Frank Sargent, Bill Well, Jane Smith, Paul Slucci, you know, and even Mitt Romney when Mitt Romney was governor um, and Charlie <laughs> Baker. Uh, you know, I, I just think that, you know, Massachusetts is a blue state. You know, we voted for George McGovern. Uh, but the fact is we are an independent state uh, that likes to see balance. Uh, and I just don't think that the sort of right wing brand of politics that, that Jeff Deal, who, by the way, is a former Democrat, um, that Jeff Deal uh, really is espousing right now, the sort of hatred that has come from, you know, Donald Trump and, and sort of his ilk and the continuing, you know, exposure of the sort of crime wave uh, that has taken place, you know, whether it's just, you know, finding out that Wilbur Ross, you know, even more, um, you know, not only lying to Congress about the census, but, but even more, um, you know, corruption of the census process the uncovering of these things about the administration broadly. Um, I don't know if I'm Jeff Deal, if I want to be defending that stuff. You can go after, you know, anybody that you want to. But I think that if it is a Trump referendum, um, you're going to see this being a very difficult race uh, for him to get traction or, or raise enough money. We've mentioned uh, Sonia Chang-Diaz, who has been in the race uh, for a long time uh, before uh, uh, <coughs> Governor Baker announced that he would not be running. She had a response on Twitter today, a Twitter thread that said things like, Moore and I have differing views on priorities and governing, and I look forward to her joining the ongoing conversation we've been having across our state. We must build a movement across age, race, class, and faith to elect a governor who's shown they'll take on tough fights for change, even when it's not politically convenient. Erin, um, I, I would note that Ben Dowling was in the race recently, too, and, and, and dropped out um, citing uh, funding and inability to, to raise uh, enough money to be viable. Um, what, what do you think will happen regarding fundraising? Are we going to see some defections from the race? Uh, more Healy already coming in with all this money. And um, is... Should people be really considering if they should stay in the race or not? Well, I mean, that's for them to decide. But, you know, Ben looked at his um, bottom line and he didn't have enough money. Sonia Chang-Diaz has about $200,000 by um, last count. And, you know, I don't know about Alan, but I, I actually think Sonia Chang-Diaz is one reason that Maura Healy, even though I think she was in all along, had some trepidation because progressive activists have gone to Chang Diaz. These are the individuals who were with Bernie, and they were with Markey, and then they were with Michelle Wu. And those progressive activists, it is a small sector of the electorate, but they are vocal. They are saying, 
What is Maury Healy offering that Sonia Chang Diaz is not? And I think the reason that she got in is because she has a great answer to that question. You know, she ran an administration. She has individual accomplishments. If you're a state senator, however talented, you still have to deal with all the other state senators <laughs> to, uh, to get anything done. So I do think Chang Diaz gave her a bit of a pause because she's used to being the progressive liberal darling. Um, of that that small sector. When she ran against Tolman, um, the progressives were with her and the Democratic establishment was not. That said, if you don't have the money, you can't run the race. And if Maura Healy looks like a foregone conclusion, why donate to candidates that can't win? So It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. On the progressive issue, and to get back to you, Shannon O'Brien, um, the issue of marijuana is one that Maura Healy was not on the winning side for. In a 2016 op-ed, uh, Healy wrote with Governor Baker and Mayor Walsh, the uh, title of it was, Mass Should Not Legalize Marijuana. They argued against the ballot question, which, of course, the voters later approved 54 to 46 uh, percent. Um, the ACLU, of course, has been noting that black people are four times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than white people. There are a number of issues from her position as a law, as a, a law enforcement person, as, as an attorney general, which will make her vulnerable uh, from an attack from Sonia Chang Diaz and from Danielle Allen. But I wonder, does that also make her more appealing to the vast number of independents in the state who have voted uh, for Democrats on one hand and for Republicans uh, as governor in the other? There certainly will be enough issues for this Democratic field to debate. And, and I don't think you're going to find 100 percent, you know, unanimity on any issue. Um, and I just, you know, I, well, you know, the, the marijuana issue is, is something that, that um, you know, does incorporate social justice. And since that has been passed, social justice and economic opportunity, frankly, I think that um, the, 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 the administration can be doing a better job to make sure that they uh, implement uh, and make uh, real uh, some of the promises of, of social equity uh, that were put in place uh, with the passage of that law. But the bottom line is, and, and it was what Aaron was saying, it's it's not just money, you know. And I would bet today uh, that that Mar Mar Healy, you know, probably has closer to four million dollars in the bank. Uh, you know, I heard she raised over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars by breakfast this morning, <laughs> and that is just you know pent up enthusiasm. Um, I will say that Danielle Allen um, had has been surprising uh, in her ability to raise funds. Uh, and for someone who'd never run for office before, I think she had five, six hundred thousand dollars in the bank at the end of last year. But the, it's not just money. It's also sort of the mechanics. It's understanding. And, and I can't tell you how many candidates have called me to say, thinking about running for statewide office, I'm so passionate, I'm passionate, I'm passionate. But the fact is, it's not just money. It's the mechanics of how do you, um, you know, get past the Democratic uh, you know, nominating process at the convention. You know, how do you get that percent to get your name on the ballot? How do you put together a statewide organization? One of the things that was different when I ran, and I cannot believe it's been 20 years since I ran for governor, um, that, that the internet, you know, is a great equalizer. It can help you raise money. It can help you reach out to the Bernie bros. You know, one of the secret weapons that Ed Markey had in, you know, when it looked like uh, Joe Kennedy uh, was going to be the juggernaut and that was where the safe money was, there was a group of under, you know, under the radar teenagers, 20 mm -hmm. somethings, true. that really gave energy uh, to the Markey campaign uh, that really helped turn things around for him. So I, I don't um, underestimate how much money Moore has, but it's really the mechanics. What does it mean, you know, in a modern uh, internet era of running a campaign? How can, you know, some of those can other candidates? Um, put together the tools that they need for a successful uh, race uh, in September. Erin O'Brien, we noted it in the open, and we've we've talked about it a little bit. Uh, Moore Haley is a is a lesbian. She's been openly gay uh, in a state where marriage equality was born and birthed, um, and where um, you know the very first openly gay elected official, Elaine Noble in Cambridge in the 1970s, mm -hmm. was a state rep. Um, do you think that it's going to be an issue in some way in this campaign, or are we now sort of just far past that, that we just need to note it and move on? It's historic, and that's always a big deal. So uh, my view is that should be celebrated in terms of how it plays electorally. Honestly, it helps her with the left. And anyone who isn't voting for Maura Healey because she's a lesbian wouldn't vote for her on policy anyway. <laughs> 
And from what I know about Maura Healy, she will enjoy, if she were to win, being able to, um, you know, sort of stick that flag and uh, be um, prideful. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and we shouldn't um, gloss over the basketball aspect, uh, Shannon O'Brien. I mean... I was um, just going to say that. <laughs> Go ahead. Can I, can I tell you... It, this, it, it, that's one of the things is that I, 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 this is incredibly sexist, but watching her twirl a basketball is absolutely the cutest, but the, the, you know, I used to go and campaign, you know, with a group of these old guys, World War II and Korean War veterans, you know, and they love the fact that, you know, I played soccer, right. you know, and they thought, oh my God, you know, and, and I don't, you know, I don't like, I don't use that word cute or feisty. I kind of hate those words, but the fact is that is appealing to some of those more, you know, blue collar guys, you know, we might not be able to get them, you know, back in an election this year, but she, again, it's that sort of quality of her sort of personality um, that I think opens doors for her uh, where, you know, maybe 20 years ago they might be sh been shut, but I think that she appeals to, you know, a broader um, sector. Some will, you know, point to the historic nature of her candidacy, but I ultimately think that it's going to be the strength. Her, the fact that she's a basketball player is, I mean, to me, endlessly, you know, interesting that she played that on the professional level. And I think it is this thing that, uh, you know, makes her appealing to people who might not necessarily. Yeah. I know, teach oh, sports cool. and politics, and I will say that she could do all that at 5'4 is impressive. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. I had no idea yeah. I had a shot. I'm, I'm, I'm crying right. over here. All right, Shannon O'Brien. You know, Massachusetts, like, scrappy. We do. And we one thing I'm watching for is, you know, does Char I want to see, does Charlie Baker endorse in this race? Or does he give a soft nod to Maura Healy, who I think he likes a lot more than he likes Jeff Deal? Well, they st have stay tuned. Bond over. Stay <laughs> tuned. We'll have more. Aaron O'Brien, Shannon O'Brien, thank you so much for joining us with your insight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.